Hi, this is video 5 of the fractions video series. This one's comparing fractions and sometimes putting them in order. To compare fractions, we've got three rules. The first one's a bit weird, but the rest of the other two are uh, pretty logical. Let's have a look. Rule 1, if the tops of the fractions are the same, then what happens is the smallest bottom is actually the biggest fraction. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So we've got one third and one half here. And so um, what we've got is um, the same tops. The tops are the same here. So the smallest bottom, in this case the two, that's uh, in, the, in what happens to be the biggest fraction. So it's a strange old rule, but uh, the half is bigger than one third there. So it's almost like the bottoms are working opposite to what you'd expect there. Half is a bigger fraction than one third. Another example, can you spot the tops are the same? So the smaller bottom, in this case the one with the five, is actually the biggest fraction of the two. And one last one, the tops are the same again. So this, uh, this set rule only works when the tops are the same. The smallest bottom, in this case the ten, is actually part of the bigger of the two fractions. Kind of an upside down rule but still it works that way because uh, these numbers are on the bottom and they sort of act in a slightly opposite way. The bigger the bottom number the smaller the overall fraction. Okay let's have a look at uh, the second way we compare fractions. This one's a bit more uh, logical to our brain here. If the bottoms are the same then the smallest top is the smallest fraction. That makes a bit of sense. So I think we know from uh, just looking that three-sevenths is smaller than four-sevenths. Uh, that's pretty logical. So this is this is a nice one rule this one. So three-sevenths is the smaller of the um, of the two fractions there. Let's have a look at another pair. And I think you can spot that uh, nine-tenths is a bigger fraction and seven-tenths is the smaller fraction there. Okay, that one's a bit more logical. Okay, it gets a bit tricky. We, uh, we've got the first two rules there when we had, uh, the first rule was uh, with uh, the, the tops the same and the second rule was with bottoms the same. Uh, we've got a rule here when um, that, that we have uh, two fractions with different bottoms and different tops for that matter. So uh, the way we compare fractions is we make the bottoms the same and then we compare the tops. Okay, how do we make the bottoms the same? Well we've got to pick a number that 3 can go into and 4 can go into. One way of finding uh, such a number is to multiply those two numbers together. 3 times 4 would make 12. So because 3 times 4 makes 12, we know that 3 goes into 12 and 4, bo 4 also goes into 12. So we're going to put uh, both, we're going to change both of these fractions into, um, into being over 12 instead. Okay, let me see. So what we say to ourselves is if we've uh, changed the 3 into a 12, we would have had to multiply that 3 by 4. So we're going to do the same to the top. Whatever you do to the bottom of a fraction, you've got to do the top as well. So if I time, multiply the top by 4 as well, can you see that I'm going to get an 8 on the top there? So whatever I've done to the bottom, I've got to do the top. 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 4 is 8. So we're getting like an equivalent fraction there. We saw that in a previous video. Okay, let's have a look at what we're uh, doing to the other fraction. We would have multiplied by, can you see? We would have multiplied by 3 on the bottom. And to pick an equivalent fraction, we've got to multiply by 3 on the top. So can you see that we might get 9 on the top there? Now that's a process we'll have to do when we're adding fractions in a, in a video or two. So uh, yeah, pretty tricky, but still. So that'll be 9 over 12. Now at least, when seeing they've got the same, same bottoms here, they're both over 12 here now, uh, we can pretty easily pick which one's bigger. And that's that one there. So, uh, so yep, 9 twelfths is, is the bigger of the two fractions. And we can only really tell once we've made them have the same bottoms. We've, we've made the bottoms the same and then we're able to compare the tops. Okay, when we put uh, fractions in order, there's two main orders that we're asked to um, to use. Ascending order is when um, 
the numbers are going or the fractions are going from smallest to largest. So let's have a look. This is uh, pretty logical. We'll use, we'll use fractions with all the same bottoms to make it easier here. One seventh is smallest, then we go three sevenths, then four sevenths, then six sevenths. So you can see the fractions are getting bigger as we go. The other way that uh, you're asked to order fractions is descending order, and that's going from largest to smallest. So 9 tenths and then 7 tenths and then 3 tenths and then 1 tenth are getting, uh, they're going from big to small there. Now just to help you with remembering what is ascending order and what is descending order, I've got a little bit of a way to remember it here. Now see how there's an A for the word ascending? So I'll write that A separately and what I'm going to do to help us remember that that goes to, from small to big or lowest to uh, highest I guess I'm going to suggest that we could make a little arrow out of that A and that arrow is pointing up. So we're starting with small fractions and we're going bigger and bigger. We're getting larger and larger. So, um, and also with the word descending starts with the letter D. So D for descending, D is for down. So uh, the fractions are going downwards in terms of value. They're going from biggest to smallest there. So a couple of little ways to remember that, uh, to help you remember which one's ascending order and which one's descending order. So that's comparing the sizes of, uh, of fractions and putting them in different orders, ascending order and descending order. hope that helps when you get to your next test. See you next time.